Hey guys, Bill Blanchin here, and in today's video I am pleased to announce a new script release called Screen Stars. Now many thanks to Mike Cranfield for helping me make this script, as we feel that this script is going to be the best way for you to add and remove stars from your DSL image using PixInsight. Now this script is actually going to be the first of a few scripts that we're going to be releasing soon, but we felt that we should release this one first, because when you see what we're doing in this script, and then you see the other scripts that follow, you're going to get a better understanding as to why we're doing it this way, and it might actually change the way you do your workflow. So you might be asking yourself, why waste time writing a script when you can use something like Pixel Math to add and remove stars for you? Well, there's a few reasons why. One, there's people who just don't know how to use Pixel Math, or they just don't like it, or they might be afraid of it, especially beginners. Uh, PixInsight is a very intimidating software for people who are just now getting into it, and they may not be comfortable with Pixel Math. So what we wanted to do is create a graphical interface so you can load your images and then you can remove your stars and then add them and then see exactly what's going on with your image. Two, and most importantly, we've actually come up with a better way of adding and removing stars, especially when you're working with a non-linear or stretched image. So what we're doing is, is we're giving you the option. We're giving you the option to use the conventional screening or unscreening math, and you typically want to use that on, say, a linear image. And by the way, this script is designed for linear or non-linear images. But if you're using a non-linear image, we're giving you a new option. Now this new option is called reverse stretch. So basically what we're doing is, is we're taking a nonlinear image, doing a reverse stretch, which takes it back to a pseudo linear state. Then we do the unscreening or screening, and then we forward stretch that back to its original nonlinear state. Now I know that sounds complicated, but there's many reasons why we do it like that. And the reason why we do it like that is because in a linear state, we actually have a greater separation between the highlights and the shadows. So the reason why you want this gap in between your highlights and your shadows is, say you have an image like the Orion Nebula or the Lagoon Nebula, which has very bright cores. Well, if you actually look at that image, the distance between your stars and the background might be very minimum. And this is going to be a problem because when you use conventional unscreening math, to get your stars only image, when you actually look at your stars only image, you're gonna see that not only are the stars discolored, but they're gonna be very low in luminosity. So by returning it to a linear state, we're creating that bigger gap. So when we unscreen them and then stretch it back, you're actually retaining more of that star color. So to take this even further, the whole point of us removing stars is to add them back onto another image. So typically what we do is we take a starless image and then we clone it and then we modify the starless image, whether it's through Photoshop or, or narrowband normalization, 4X, or just even curve adjustments. You know, the whole point of us removing stars is to put it onto a new image. But we also want to try to bring over a lot of that natural color as much as possible. But because we did a reverse stretch to create our new stars only image, we can actually use the same method to transfer our new stars only image over to our new starless image. So again, I know that sounds complicated, but we're gonna use the same reverse stretch method and you're gonna find out that the end result is just gonna be a lot better than just doing a conventional screening method. So the best way to illustrate this is just for me to show you exactly how the script works and then you'll understand. So for right now, let's get it installed. So in the description below is a download link. What you're gonna do is we're gonna click on this link and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna copy the link, control C, and then we're gonna come back over to PixInsight, manage repositories, click add, paste the link, hit okay, hit okay, come back in the resources, check for updates, and as you can see, it's right here, so you hit apply, it's going to install. So now that that's done, I'm going to restart PixInsight and I'll see you guys back here in a second. All right, now that PixInsight has restarted, I brought in a RGB image. Uh, this is just the Lagoon Intrepid Nebula that I shot last week and I already created a starless image. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a stars only image. So you're going to go to scripts, utilities, come down here and open up screen stars. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is right here, it's uh, the mode that we're in. So we're doing star removal, 
and the other option is star replacement and this is where we're going to add stars later on but for right now we're going to do star removal and i'm just going to disable the reverse stretch option that i talked about earlier uh, the starry view that's going to be the image um, with stars so i'm going to select it so that's rgb now the starless image is right here and we're going to select that and once we have these selected as you can see we have our stars only image so to show you how this uh, this visualization works is um, right here you have the option where you can go and you can select an area and it's going to zoom and then you can double click on it to zoom back out so it also says right here you know click and drag to zoom and double click to reset zoom so when we zoom in this area, this is the area of the lagoon, which is a very bright uh, area. So to give you an example of what I was talking about between the difference between screening and reverse screening is watch this. I'm going to click reverse stretch and you can see a lot of that luminosity and uh, brightness came out, but also uh, a lot of that star color was uh, retained. So this is, you know, the before and this is after. So if we double click on here, you can see that this is the area of the lagoon and then the trepids over here. But if you look at it before, you can see that the areas uh, in heavy nebulosity with the regular screening method, they, you know, the star color just doesn't come over. Uh, but if you look at it here, you can actually see it does. So again, it just, it's just a better way of doing it. Now, because this is a nonlinear image, I will keep this on reverse stretch. So the next part is just outputting the stars only image. As you can see here, we have an output option and it's set to auto. So this is just gonna auto name it for us, but we do have the option to type in our own name. So I'm just gonna call it stars. So all you do is hit this check box here and it's gonna create the new stars only image. And as you can see, we have our stars only image right here. Now, just for comparison reasons, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unclick this and I'm just going to call this um, dash, uh, dash two, for example. And I'm just going to create and basically what this is going to do is just create a stars only image just using the conventional uh, screening um, just, so, just for comparison reasons. All right, so that image was created, and real fast, uh, because this is a script, this, uh, this little um, icon right here, uh, this is going to allow us to drag it over to our workspace, and now that I can close this, I can come up here and I can rename this screen stars, and if you guys are uh, in a habit of saving your icons for later use, uh, you can actually do this, and all you got to do is just... Uh, uh, drag this over to your image and it's going to open up that dialog. Um, but for now, I just want to show you the comparison between, let me just move this up here, between what the reverse stretch looks like and what it looks like uh, using the conventional method here. So if we zoom in here, I mean, look at the, the stars. You know, the, the colors are really nice. And let me just compare the view. So you can see that these stars, they're, now it still has color, um, but they're, um, if you actually start looking at it from a number standpoint, you're going to see that you just get uh, also a better star color and luminosity just using the reverse stretch method. Uh, but again, you know, you're going to use that for uh, nonlinear images. Um, but this is, if I compare the view over here, you can see this is what the, uh, the original image looks like. This is what the, the new stars image looks like. And of course, that's the, the other version. So I'm going to close that because we're not going to use it. All right. So now that we have our stars only image, now the whole point of this, again, is to transfer this over to a new image. So what I've done here is I've just ran um, this image here through narrowband normalization just to create something different. OK, so we got our stars only image and we got this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this on here um, just to open it. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click star replacement. OK. And because we did the reverse stretch before, we're going to do it again. So over here, what we need to do is we need to pick our starless view. So now I'm going to pick the image that I want to transfer the stars to. And now I'm going to select the stars only image. And as you can see, it transferred the stars over to the new starless image. So as you can see, if I zoom in here, 
you can actually see the stars transferred over. Uh, and the areas of heavy uh, nebulosity, they transferred over uh, pretty good. So let me just zoom into this area here. And what I'll do is I'll create the image and then we can zoom in uh, after that. But you can see on our new image, we got our blue stars, our yellow stars, and uh, things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new image. And I'm just going to call this, uh, say, final. And I'm just going to hit click. And then I'm going to close this down. So here's our stars only image and here's the image with stars. So let me just drag this out of the way and I'm going to share the view here so that you can see. So you can see we got our blue stars, our yellow stars, uh, but it's on an image that has been altered. So um, anyways, um, this is the benefit of doing the reverse stretch is it just uh, gives you more option. And areas that are not in heavy nebulosity, you're not really going to see much of a difference. But the areas in heavy nebulosity like this, which has quite a bit of a, a color change, you're going to see that the um, transfer just works a lot better using the reverse stretch. But yeah, this is how this works on a uh, nonlinear image. So if you want, I'll show you an example of a linear image. All right, so I brought in uh, two uh, linear images. Uh, this is a, uh, a linear image of the uh, Cygnus wall, NGC 7000, and this is the starless image of this image. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to drag the icon over here, and we're going to make sure that star removal is selected because we're going to remove the stars. And um, because this is a linear image, we can actually keep this off. However, you can actually run it with it on. And the reason why is, is just because it's linear doesn't mean it's not bright. So for example, say you were imaging with like a RASA, you know, an F2 scope, and you went for, you know, some crazy long exposure time where the actual linear image is bright. Um, you know, the same philosophy still applies. Um, by by uh, reducing it, uh, reverse stretching it, we create that better separation. So uh, even on a linear image, don't be afraid to leave this on. But for this example, I will leave it off. Um, right here, uh, we have the starry image, this image here. So all we got to do is select the um, starless image, which is right here. And uh, as you can see, this is what the stars only image looks like. Now this is actually applying an STF stretch just so you can see it. So it kind of looks uh, a little blown out here, but in actual fact, it's, it's not. It's just because it is linear. But we are giving you the option to be able to look at the, um, the STF. And uh, this um, is a benefit to whenever we add the stars back onto our new starless image. So um, just like uh, as before, let's just give this a name. We'll just call this stars and we will click this button here and as you can see we have our linear stars only image right so while this is open and because you saw how uh, the last process worked what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select star replacement and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my new starless image and uh, that image is actually right here. And what this is, is this is just a, uh, a starless image that has been altered, but it's still linear. And then um, the star view, it, uh, it uh, populated the stars only image. So as you can see, it actually added the stars. So if I zoom in here, you can see the, the stars have been added and it's all in a linear phase. So it's really cool. And um, yeah, so let's just give this a name. We'll call this final. Click this button here, and then I will close this down. And as you can see, if I exit out and come back in, you can see that we have our linear image that has the stars transferred over. So uh, anyways, that's pretty much how the script works. You have options. You just have uh, a couple methods of how you want to screen your stars on. And, um, and whether or not you want to work in linear or nonlinear mode. So uh, please download the script, give it a try, and stay tuned because in the next couple days we have more scripts coming out, and a lot of this is going to fall into place as to why we're doing it in this order. 
Um, also, I do want to mention, um, because this is a, a very time-consuming um, process, not only creating uh, the pixel math processes that I put out there for free and also uh, Mike's time. Uh, Mike, you know, he's a fantastic uh, software developer and to put this into an actual script, it does take a lot of resources and we do want to make a lot more scripts to help you guys in astrophotography processing. Um, but what we decided to do is, you know, we're going to uh, supply these tools free of charge. But if you guys do want to support uh, our efforts in making more scripts, we did create a, uh, a, a buy me a coffee link. Uh, that's also in the description below. If you guys wanted to help the cause, it would really uh, help us from a time and cost perspective. But um, anyways, I think uh, that pretty much wraps it up. So hopefully you guys can find really good use of this tool. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.